welcome to Studio Access This Month in XR. My name is Ayanna Crabtree and I am a Carp Library Fellow, XR Researcher, and XR Specialist for Studio X, the University of Rochester's hub for XR Technologies. Studio Access This Month in XR takes place at the end of each month and gives you a look into the cool, the crazy, and the creative new things that have surfaced in the XR field. The findings we share can range from virtual reality games and digital novels to new technology and software updates. This month was September, so let's dive right in. TikTok owner ByteDance takes first step into virtual reality with latest acquisition. ByteDance, the Chinese company that owns TikTok, acquired a VR startup company called Pico. In the first quarter of 2021, Pico was the third largest producer of VR headsets. ByteDance's acquisition could soon pit it against Facebook's Oculus systems. ByteDance's headquarters did not reveal the size of the deal, but said that, quote, Pico's comprehensive suite of software and hardware technologies, as well as the talent and deep expertise of the team, will support both our entry into the VR space and long-term investment in this emerging field." End quote. In addition to this, ByteDance also acquired major mobile gaming company, Moontune, in order to expand into gaming. They are optimistic about the future of VR and its alignment with their company mission. Elon Musk aims to create a full-dive VR system with Neuralink. Elon Musk aims to create a full-dive VR system with the help of his brain microchip company, Neuralink. You might be wondering, what is full-dive VR? The term full-dive VR originated from the 2009 Japanese novel Sword Art Online, but the idea has been around for years. Imagine being able to play a video game without having to move a muscle. With full-dive VR, you would simply have to put on the headset, and from there, you would control everything with your mind. In February, Musk released a video of a monkey that could play video games with his mind by using a Neuralink computer chip located in his skull. Musk claims that one day the Neuralink could allow humans to send concepts to one another using telepathy, or even allow people to exist in what he considers a safe state, meaning that after they die, their consciousness would be transported to a robot or even to another human. Report: Apple's AR VR headset will require a connection with an iPhone to work. Apple has been working on their design for an augmented and virtual reality headset since last year. While this is pretty exciting, reports say that for now it is likely that the headset will need to be paired to an iPhone, much like the early versions of the Apple Watch required. It is said that the headset will communicate wirelessly with a host device to compute the display, whether that be a virtual, mixed, or augmented reality one. Sources are unsure when this initial headset might release, but it is already rumored that a sleeker pair of AR glasses are likely to release as early as 2023. Facebook and Ray-Ban are rolling out smart glasses that actually look cool. Will anyone buy them? It has been nearly a decade since Google first released its product, the Google Glass, which flopped as a consumer product. In the time since then, a plethora of companies have attempted to create more popularized smart eyewear. Earlier this month, Facebook became the latest company to attempt these glasses for public consumption with their glasses called Ray-Ban Stories. The glasses will have a base price set at $299 and come in multiple styles. With cameras embedded in the outer edge of each frame, the glasses will be able to take photos and short videos, allowing the user to listen to music and even make phone calls. The glasses will pair with an app called Facebook View to let users edit and share pictures and videos shot with the glasses. The writer of the article had the opportunity to test the glasses for themselves and reports back that they weigh no more than regular Ray-Ban sunglasses, making them comfortable to wear, and they are conveniently charged while sitting in their case. They reported that the sound is crisp, while not blocking out the sounds of the world around them. The only issues reported were that the touchpad on the glasses had trouble interpreting their signals, and they often struggled to capture the entirety of the scene that they wanted to. They did say, however, that the glasses were fantastic for capturing photos while still being able to play with their kids on the playground. They were able to be in the moment while still taking photos. Some specs about these specs. The glasses can take video for up to 30 seconds. While they are videoing and taking photos, an LED light comes on to alert those around you that you are taking photos. The light is visible from 25 feet away. The author concludes with a statement of warning about how no one really seemed to notice that the glasses had cameras, and that this could lead to an invasion of people's privacy in public, and that the glasses don't really seem necessary for daily life as of yet. Zoom meetings heading to VR on Oculus Quest 2 next year. Facebook has announced partnership with Zoom video communications that will bring the popular teleconferencing software to Horizon's workrooms. 
Horizons Workrooms is a VR co-working platform that is available on the Oculus Quest 2 that makes use of the headset's features to make a unique VR co-working solution unlike anything else currently available. Beginning next year, Horizons Workrooms will feature support for Zoom meetings, allowing you to connect with those who do not have access to VR. The incorporation of Zoom Whiteboard will allow you to interact with others across multiple platforms. The company states, quote, the way we work is changing, and we're excited that Zoom and Workrooms are working together to help you and your colleagues defy distance to stay connected and productive across realities." End quote. Game night returns in VR with Neverboard on Oculus Quest. COVID prevented families and friends from gathering together for board game nights. Neverboard, a social board game platform, found a VR solution. Using the technology of the Oculus Quest 2 headsets, Neverboard will allow players to gather in a virtual space using their Oculus avatars and compete in a variety of multiplayer experiences. Upon launch, Neverboard will feature one game, Crazy 8s, for free, and three other games that can be purchased using either in-game currency that can be earned through play, or of course, purchased with real-world money. No officially licensed games have been announced at the moment, but the company plans to include some in the future. The Neverboard team states, quote, we have a number of licensed games on the roadmap that we will announce at a later date. We are also listening to our players about what games are most important to them and are open to hearing from board game makers who would like to see their games at Neverboard." End quote. Some additional features of the app include being able to distract your opponents with props in the space, such as playing a musical instrument or starting a food fight. The game will be launching exclusively on the Oculus Quest and Oculus Quest 2 this fall. There is no word on a price at the current time. Luokong, Microsoft, Rally for China's Connected Cars. Microsoft Inc. will be working with Luokong Technology Corp., one of China's largest spatial computing companies, to develop a driverless car service. The partnership will see the companies working together to build the Chinese autonomous driving market. The Luokong affiliate eMapGo Technologies, EMG, received service contracts from European and US automakers that are set to take effect in the near future. The chief executive of EMG said that increasing demand for flexible computing showed China's autonomous driving market services has significant room for growth. He concluded that the partnership could aim to promote the development of safe and intelligent autonomous driving in China. The vehicles will require strong 5G infrastructure to execute real-time communication of data between the vehicles and the servers. Several top automakers have begun incorporating XR technologies into their vehicles for design features such as AR windshields, entertainment systems, and more. XR at UR Now that the physical space is open, Studio X will be holding some super cool events in October. First up, we have Create a Spooky 3D Character in Blender. This event will be taking place on Thursday, October 14th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Next up, we have a Unity Crash Course series that is happening every Wednesday from October 20th to November 10th from 4 to 5.30 p.m. Both workshops are being held in Studio X, which is located in the first floor of Carlson Library. Conclusion That's all we have for the September episode of Studio X's This Month in XR. There are many more exciting developments happening in the XR field, but these are the ones we found to be the most interesting. For more detailed information about what was discussed in this month's episode, please reference the articles that are linked in the description below. For more XR-related content, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and of course, subscribe to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if there's something we could do better, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.